Hi and welcome to the channel. I hope everyone is well. Unfortunately here in Okinawa it is the middle of the rainy season. Excuse the goats, we've got a goat farm next door so that's the noise you can hear. Unfortunately it's the rainy season here in Okinawa and as a result I have hardly been out. Most of the photography I've been doing recently is from my garden or this balcony area here and there are some trees over here and you can get you can get a number of different species around here. I luckily got a ruddy kingfisher in a tree just behind there a couple of weeks ago. I've basically been taking pictures of birds in these trees here because the weather's been so bad it's not really worth going out. But anyway, that's not the purpose of this video today. I tried to make a video about a week ago and having watching back, when I started to edit it, it just bored me watching it. So. I'm not gonna put that out, I was just waffling and it wasn't really to the point. But basically what I've been doing recently, I have been taking photos of butterflies in flight. In Okinawa we get a lot of butterflies and they've started coming out for the summer. We get a number of different species of swallow tail butterflies and they are beautiful and I love taking photos of them. And I've been using my Nikon Z8 plus the 500 millimeter 5.6 pf and I found that seems to be a really good combination for taking this type of photography so we'll go back onto the computer and I will talk you through a few of the shots I got of butterflies in flight but basically the Nikon Z8 and the 500 mm 5.6 did so well and I'm gonna do a future video about that combination because Yes, you have to use the FTZ adapter, but the combination has really blown me away how well it does, and I will not be upgrading that lens. Yes, 500 millimeters sometimes can be a bit short, but you've always got the DX crop mode with the Nikon Z8, which basically acts like a D500, but you're still getting 20 frames a second. So I've been so impressed with the combination, and it works great for butterflies and flight. I've only really done a couple of hours this week, so through the summer I will continue taking more photos but today's video is about butterflies in flight with the Nikon combination. Let's get back to the computer. Right we are back at the computer. I took a lot of shots and I haven't had time to go through all of them but I randomly chose seven or eight shots and edited them. So let's start with the first one. So this was at f7.1 Four thousand for the second ISO 1400 with a slight exposure compensation of a third of a stop. Now I just liked the wing position of this shot. Really not a great shot at all. But you can see some of the colorings in the butterfly. You can see the proboscis which is the antenna thing. So yeah I think that we'll just choose this one to start things off. Not a great shot but it gives also a little bit of environment. Uh, the background's nicely blurred out, but you can see what it's doing, where it's going, the kind of environment it flies in. Anyway, let's get on to the next one. So I really liked this one. I tried, the time that I was taking the shots, I really wanted to get this pose. It was in my mind to get with the wings down like that. But nice, the wings nice and sharp. The head's not super, super sharp, but I do like this shot. And this was a, Again, this was for f5.6, 4,000 a second, ISO 1,250 a second. f5.6 with the Nikon Z8. And as I said, I love this shot. Right, now this was actually using the pre-capture. I was practicing the pre-capture and unfortunately on the Nikon Z8, unlike the OM-1, pre-capture is JPEG only and Although I actually really like the way it works on the Nikon Z8, it seems a lot easier than it is on the OM-1 in terms of just setting it up and using it. It is in JPEG and that does obviously limit you in terms of editing the pictures. So this is edited from a JPEG. Um, the light was relatively overcast so it didn't make it that difficult. There weren't too many blown highlights, but yeah, this was used in the pre-capture and this was at 5.6 4000 ISO 720. Right, on to the next. This wasn't Pro Capture, I think this was raw, but I quite like the shape of the proboscis in this one, slightly different from what it usually is. And this, I think, is a common blue bottle, 
which isn't actually a swallowtail butterfly, but there was about five different species of butterflies in the fields that I was photographing. And I actually wanted to get the common rose, which is a beautiful red butterfly where the wings are red, but also the body is red. But unfortunately none, there was only one, I think, and it didn't come close enough. I think they're not really around until later in the summer. So I will definitely be trying to take pictures of those later in the summer. But anyway, this is a common blue bottle and it flew with a nice clear background. But as I said, I like the way the antenna proboscis thing is shaped at this point. And this was at 5.6, 4,640 ISO. So most of the settings here are roughly the same. Nikon 500mm 5.6 PF. As I said, it's kind of perfect for this kind of photography. It doesn't have the closest minimum focal distance. It's about 3.5 meters, I think. But these butterflies are all relatively large. And actually, it works fine because you need a little bit of space. You don't want to get too tight in with the butterfly because you need that space for when it's flying, especially when you're tracking it through the air. You need a lot of space either side. So I actually found this lens to be a perfect combination with the Nikon Z8 and it's 20 frames a second for tracking these these butterflies in flight. As always, I'm always changing my settings, but I think I was, most of the time, I was using large wide area using the bird eye detection on, and that seemed to do really well with butterflies. I had auto ISO, and I was trying to do 3,200 or 4,000 a second shutter speed. And as I said, it seemed to pick up the butterflies pretty well. It's not perfect. These things are super, super quick. There was often very, very complicated backgrounds, so it wasn't easy. But the setup did really well. And as I said, I only had a couple of hours. And with more time, I think I would get a lot better shots. Anyway, on to the next one. Right, so this is actually a non-crop. I think I did a bit of editing but I think I show a cropped version of this picture later. But I just liked how the whole image looked. And this is kind of the environment. So I'm basically focusing on the highest flowers of a group of flowers because I want the blurred background. If you focus on a lower flower, you want to get a busy background. If you can focus on a higher flower and wait for the butterfly to arrive near that flower, that means you're going to get a less uncluttered background. Well, this was at 2000 the second f5.6 iso 800 anyway here we have a butterfly either landing or taking off from this flower now in this kind of situation you don't know whether to actually crop the flower out or keep it in but i think it gives some kind of top context here i like the yellow in the bottom left of the picture this is quite a tattered butterfly um, i'm not sure what happens to their wings like that and quite a few of them were like that for some reason but anyway this was 2000 second again, 5.6 ISO 800. Now this shot was, I was really happy with. This is a pretty unique shot. This is, I think, two different species of butterfly and they have collided to make it look like this particular butterfly has four wings. And I'll just show a few photos now leading up. These are the unedited raw images and you'll see that these two butterflies come together and at one point this pretty unique situation happens where it makes two butterflies coming together look like one now of course these things happen in a fraction of a second so this was extremely lucky to have happened i think i could try and take this shot again another thousand times it wouldn't come out like this so i think this was a lucky shot I think they're two different species, but I think the front species is where you can see the head is called a co common Mormon. And they are known to do a lot of mimicry, which is the female of the species pretends to look like other butterflies, specifically red butterflies, so they don't get eaten by predators because red equals poison. And I'm not sure if this is a male and a female of the same species or two different species lighting but anyway I really like how this came out I tried to follow it with the tracking and it did pretty well and, it was, and of course you've got the nice clear background so I was really happy with this shot and it was 
eight hundredth of a second, 5.6, ISO 500. Next shot. This is a crop of the picture I showed earlier, which had an uncropped version of the whole scene with the flowers involved. And this was, yeah, I told you that before, 2,000 of a second, ISO 800. So this was the last picture of the photos I edited up to this point. There's loads of others, some of them I haven't been through yet. I really do like the proboscis on this picture. It looks really clear. And I just like the, the curved nature of it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you are new here and you haven't seen any of my videos before, please think about subscribing and giving this video a like and going back and watching some of my older videos. I share some tips and photos that I take using either my Nikon setup or my OM-1 setup. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Take care and see you in the next one. Bye.